day, Andy. Welcome, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for everyone for giving a bit of time today. So uh, this session will last probably about 45 minutes and we'll have a bit of Q&A uh, at the end. So as Aretha already mentioned, if you uh, just go ahead and put anything in the in the Q&A box, any question that comes to your mind, I'll be reading through all questions at the end. So um, this session is going to be quite a packed one. And um, yeah, I have a tendency of talking quite quickly, so do pull me up if that happens, because there's a lot to cover, and we, I'm going to try and make this uh, session as practical as possible. So there's really three parts to the next 45 minutes, which is going to be talking about where content fits into our broader marketing mix. So how can we use social media or content marketing more generally to really, like, to maximum effect, to drive results for our fundraising efforts? And then what does that good strategy look like, right? Because, you know, everyone knows social media is important, but how do we create a structure around it that's feasible for us when we're resource constrained, resource limited? How can we make a strategy work for us without, you know, having to have dedicated people to do social media for us without a massive budget? Because, you know, none of us have that, particularly in, in the nonprofit world. Now, how can it be done? So this is the most... I think fun bit of the session because we'll take all of the learnings, all the structure, and then walk you through one by one how we bring this to life across all of these different steps of this strategy. And at that point, everyone's favorite bit is where I'll show you all of my favorite tools to do that as well. So all of which either are free completely or have free versions of. Um, and I will mention Content Cal in that, but um, Content Cal is listed on the TechSoup marketplace as well with a 70% discount and such. So yeah, all of the tools that I will, I will talk about are, are very accessible. But it's more about the tactics than the tools, this one. But I want to make sure you have everything you need to really come off the back of this session. And if you think what I've shared is useful, you'll have everything you need to bring this to life immediately. So we're going to start by setting the scene a little bit because, uh, sorry for a big data slide to start with, but the way that people are consuming content on social channels is changing dramatically. And the last 18 months has shifted that massively. So um, this is some global data we're looking at. As you can probably tell, I'm from the UK, but uh, this is all the information I'll show you is related to, to global um, the global statistics. So these are the primary channels that people go to research um, topics and it's brand research, but ultimately any organization that they're searching for predominantly, as you see here, people will, will go to search engines, so Google predominantly, or social networks to find that information. But the important message to take from this is that the top two places that individuals go to discover information and research certain organizations, causes, or whatever, are two channels that we do not own as businesses. They are content marketing channels, search engines, and social networks. But now what I'm going to show you here is some data from HubSpot. So that's uh, another marketing technology software, but they, they interviewed 1,500 marketers worldwide, and these were the primary channels um, that all of these uh, organizations use when it came to marketing. So great to see that social media is the largest percentage of what people are using as the primary source or the primary channel for their marketing. Website, second to that, quite encouraging to see that together because fundamentally, you know, search and social are the, are the two main channels. But what you see in the top five and the bit that I really want to draw your attention to is the fact there's a big mix here between long-term activities so things that take a bit of time to really bear any fruit and really come to life like content marketing and seo search engine optimization so essentially helping your website rank higher in google search results so that's more of a long-term strategy then we've also got like page social so you know that is a paid strategy as as you would expect and we've also got more direct conversion things like email. So it's a big mix of tactics in the top five channels people use for, for marketing. And I'm, I'm fairly sure most people on this session will use a bit of a mix. But the really interesting thing to notice is, is this slide. And this is the final kind of data slide I'll show before we get into the real kind of like how to type of stuff. But I think this is a really important slide to, to really understand, to think about how content marketing works. So let's kind of orientate you around this slide. On the left-hand side, we've got potential traffic. 
So what that means is basically how many people can we potentially reach with a particular activity? So going from you know, smaller to larger on this axis. And then the bottom axis, what we see is short term to long term. How long does it take for something to yield results? And this is a really th important thing to understand, thinking that the things that we do to promote our organization, to drive our fundraising efforts, you know, we've got a range of different opportunities and channels we could use, like we've shown you in here, but they all play a different part in this. So if I kind of draw your attention to the right hand side here, looking at content and SEO. So what we're thinking about here is like your website content, your blogs, the things that will help your website appear higher up in search ranking. So when people are searching for a certain cause, mission, whatever it is that you represent, that your website will appear. Of course, that's a hugely important um, factor to keep in mind and something really important to build towards because you'll see content and SEO has the highest potential yield for growth. That makes sense because when we looked at this chart, search engines is still the primary way that people discover things. So it makes sense that has the biggest opportunity, but it does take the longest to bear fruit and really for you to yield that growth. Now, if I draw your attention all the way onto the left hand side of this chart, you've got paid advertisement. So I'm thinking about, um, you know, your Facebook ads or your Google ads, for example, where you don't have to spend a lot of money, but essentially um, little bits of money go a long way in terms of reaching more people. So that's why this chart here shows this gives you the, the best opportunity to drive short term results. So then what we've got is quite a big gap in between. So we've got kind of a ravine that's forming in between your short term stuff, which works where paid works its best. And then you've got your long term stuff, which is where, you know, your longer content, your blogs, your website content, your SEO work. You know, there's a big gap. That gap in the middle is bridged really nicely with social, whereas social helps still drive some short term results, but it also has longer term growth too. short term results because we can get big distribution because we now have 4.2 billion people across the world on social. So there's never been any better channel to connect people. So social media gives us a great opportunity for reach and gives us great opportunity to reach new people. Hence the reason you see that bridging the gap quite nicely. But hopefully that makes sense, this slide, and thinking about our short term to long term tactics. And it's important we think of both. And we don't just skew too far to the left hand side to drive results now, taking our eye off the long term game, which is, you know, about our longer form content. So that's how we can understand our content marketing mix. But let's kind of bring that to life a little bit more. So we're still in the theory bit of it before we get into the practical. But I think this um, builds on the previous slide quite well where really there are two, type of, two types of people we're trying to appeal to with our fundraising efforts. Ignore the fact that this says buyers here, this is just typically, it's representing behaviors. So two types of people we're trying to appeal to. On the left-hand side, there are people that are already aware of the cause and the mission that you represent and are already bought into it, but potentially not bought into your particular organization. And for that reason, we call these people in market. These are the people that represent the kind of short term activity here. And honestly, these people are best reached through uh, paid channels because these are people that are already aware of your um, of, of the mission or cause that you represent. So they are targeted really well through things like Facebook, for example, because you can be so precise with uh, who you're targeting. So that's where I would represent their significant opportunity to, to drive short term results through those audiences, through a rational message like this is what we do, this is what we represent, et cetera, and targeted to a narrower audience because you, you know who that audience is. But really where content marketing is most important, really where I want to focus our minds for the course of this presentation is on the right hand side. We call it out of market. So what these people are, are people that have no clue about your cause and mission, haven't considered it before, aren't even aware of this. And this is a completely different approach. And this is where social media is incredibly powerful for reaching, educating and driving awareness with a whole new audience. And that's where I personally find social media incredibly exciting because nothing really affords that level of reach. But we need to think about how we appeal to those people in a totally different way. It's actually the opposite 
of what we've just been speaking about over here instead of a rational message for those that are already kind of bought into the, the mission that you you represent we're looking at the other's perspective these are people that have no idea about this mission so it's about an emotional message why we do what we do our purpose our mission our values our beliefs and for organizations that are represented on this call that's much easier to do right you know typically i'm giving this presentation to you know commercial or corporate organizations um and it's harder for them to connect with a purpose beyond trying to maximize profits Whereas with the organizations and the meaningful causes that everyone on this session represents, it's much easier to connect to that emotional side of things and broader targeting. Because essentially, social media is about going broad and wide and building our awareness. And we're going to talk lots about this in a more practical sense. But before we segue now on to like the more practical bit, I want to be really clear in, in this, in like if we really wanted to describe what we need to achieve through social media marketing in a sentence it's this it's building trust at scale trust is the most important and fundamental foundational emotion that's generated in individuals that drives our behavior who we're friends with who we do business with what causes we represent is all driven by trust so we need to think about how we build trust at scale and trust is all about connecting at a human level and that kind of emotional connection we spoke about is, is fundamental to that. Now, as I said, let's make this a bit more practical. So now what we're going to do is show you the, the marketing funnel, if you will. So typically this represents a slightly oversimplified way of how people discover things, make decisions and essentially take an action. So in a very logical way, people become aware of a certain cause or mission or a challenge or a problem, whatever it is, they become aware of something. They then weigh up and research whatever it is they've become aware of. So do they need to take action on it? They fill themselves with information, research, learning before they're ready to make a choice of, of either supporting a cause, um, you know, yeah, essentially supporting a cause in this scenario. And then once they've made that kind of conversion, if you will, and supported a cause and, um, are now kind of a member, if you will, then it's all about loyalty. So people sticking with your cause and mission and then telling others about it. So that's, that's typically the journey we wanna take people on. But really, just so that we can focus our minds here, the way we use social media is purely at the top two pieces of this funnel, how we get more people to become aware of us and how we get more people to weigh us up against and research us um, and understand more about um, the cause and the mission that we represent, right? This is all about education in this stage. So top two parts of this funnel is really what we care about. This is the bit that's gonna help grow that trust and create that emotional connection. So now let's kind of expand on this a little bit more by going into the top two tiers of this funnel and talking about what content works well in each of those stages. So this quadrant, represents the top two tiers of this funnel. So the top two quadrants that I'm scrolling my mouse over here is all about awareness. And the bottom two relates to consideration. So awareness at the top, so people becoming aware of you for the first time is all driven, as we said, about that emotional connection. The way that we can create that emotional connection is in twofold, basically. On one side, we can entertain people. And on the other side, we can inspire. So both of those are ways of connecting at an emotional level. Now, talking about entertainment content, three things are my personal favorites from, from these. Quizzes, giveaways, and games. Always brilliant to start with. And probably the easiest thing to start, start with is like a giveaway. And honestly, the lower the value the giveaway, the better it does from what I've seen over my years of doing this. Um, so book giveaways, that kind of thing, essentially giveaways that orientate or encourage people to comment on content. So let's just say this is just one example. I'm not suggesting everyone does it, but it's just one example. So let's just say you're running a giveaway on Facebook. You've got a, yeah, a book to give away, for example. You'd encourage people to, to comment to their answer to a certain question, comment that into the chat, um, of which every time that someone comments, that, tell, that is a key signal to Facebook. I'm only using Facebook as an example, but they all work in the same way. 
that's a signal for Facebook that this post is valuable. And what will happen to that post, the more that people comment on it, it will be shown to more and more people's feeds. So that's one powerful thing, because that's increasing our reach and increasing our awareness. So that top of the funnel gets more people into it. So that's the first reason that that's powerful. And the second reason that's powerful is that we all like to win things. We all like to feel part of something. So um, the moment that we've kind of commented to be part of a certain giveaway, for example, we're emotionally connected, we're emotionally involved. So that's really, really powerful as a, as a way to kind of drive engagement early on in the strategy. That's just one example. Then we've got inspire. So um, influencers, endorsements, reviews, none of that will come as a huge surprise, but the influencer piece is something I want to pick up on is that the word influencers has kind of been blown out of proportion a little bit. When I say influencers, I'm not suggesting that anyone goes out and works with Kylie Jenner. I'm suggesting that actually we work, we find collaborations we can create with people that have some degree of influence within the community or the cause that we're trying to represent. For us, whilst we're not a nonprofit organization, to be completely clear, for, for us, that has been one of the most powerful elements of our content strategy. We haven't paid anyone to, to talk about us. In fact, the only times that we have, it hasn't worked out as well as those people that have genuinely endorsed us because they, they believe in what we're trying to do. So it's actually finding those individuals is super, super powerful. I'm going to show you ways that we can do that and how we work with others. But yeah, the top of the funnel, personally, you know, that entertainment value, quizzes, giveaways and games, great to do early on in a strategy to get more people commenting on content to make your content go further and get it seen by more people. And then influencers collaborating with others to create content together. And when you create content together, it means that it gets shared to a new audience. And a, a good example is, is exactly what we're doing right now, for example. So I've created some um, social media training guides for, for TechSoup for free to, to share. But of course, that means that the TechSoup audience also get um, first awareness of the organization that we represent. So it's all about everyone wins in that scenario. So finding suitable collaborations is such a powerful part of social and underutilized in my view. Then we're going to go to the bottom part of this this quadrant right so um let's ignore the bottom right because that's that's the most obvious really and the most kind of conversion orientated bit of content but on the left hand side for me is is really the power play that's this is the bit that um i think i care most about and it's it's all about education right so this is the, the key thing, and that's a key element of the funnel that we were just talking about here. This consideration bit is all about education. So if we're thinking about that funnel again, people become aware of you for the first time because they've maybe seen one of your, your quizzes, they've enrolled in that, or they've seen you know a person that they follow talk about you through influencers, they've become aware of you. Now they're gonna start weighing things up and researching more about your organization or about the cause that you represent. So that's when people, you know, will need to consume educational material, whether that's, you know, trend reports, research, guides, um, news, trends, that kind of thing. Those things that you can create that help people answer the questions that they really want to learn. And when you add value to people, you build trust. When you build trust, you build a reputation and reputation typically follows in building a brand and, you know, some, something that then attracts more and more people towards it. So that is a super powerful part. And it's all wrapped in that, that thing that we've been talking about throughout, throughout the whole course of this webinar so far is all about how we nurture trust. So that is our kind of like practical um, way that we can start to take what we've learned so far, how important it is to build trust, create those emotional connections, how we then use that marketing funnel we've just been talking about and how we use that awareness and consideration stage and the content that works well at each of those stages. Now, we're about to go into the kind of building the strategy bit now, but before we do, there's a very important, two very important things we need to consider. Firstly, the persona of who it is that we're trying to serve. Content marketing, social media marketing, if you wanna be more specific, um, is really, you could just call it customer first marketing. Fundamentally, we're creating content to serve the needs of others, not ourselves. Now, 
that's usually a message I hammer home for like the the commercial organizations that I talk to um, but for yourselves that'll be much much easier to do but it still means that we we absolutely we're trying to serve someone we have a we really want to be as crystal clear about who we're trying to serve as we possibly can. Now, um, I often get a question at this point where, what if I have multiple personas? What if there's lots of different audience sites I want to serve? My answer to that typically is that unless you have a really advanced social media strategy, there'll always be one group typically within a business or in an organization that represents the, the biggest opportunity, value, or whatever. Basically, it's the one that's most important to you. There'll always be one group. I would always start with a more targeted strategy focused at a certain group, being as specific as you possibly can, because that will help you create better content that resonates more, that will drive better reactions and more engagement. When you serve people the content that really means something to them, then we can build and add more personas as we go. But I would be, I'd try and be really restrained on this and be really focused on that one single persona. Now, uh, the other thing that I would say with regards to personas, because what I'm showing you here is actually our one and all of these slides we made available to you. So you can you know, get an idea from this, of course, as our organization has different purposes, but it will give you a good guide. But one thing I see lots of people fixating on, which I see as a bit of a misstep, is lots of people fixate on this bit, which is demographics. For me, just knowing that someone is 36, lives in Brooklyn uh, and has two dogs doesn't really determine whether they're the right or person for us. The thing that's more important, because demographic stuff is quite useful, it helps us think about what platform you should be on, but it's no way near as powerful as psycho, what we would call psychographic stuff. You know, what do the people that we're trying to serve truly care about? What are the things that keep them up at night? What are the things that they're that they aspiring towards? It's those kind of fundamental foundational factors, those emotional uh, drivers that we all have as human beings. When we understand that from our target audience, and the only way really of getting that is through interviews, really, or speaking to uh, to your audience. Um, and that, that in itself, just as a side note, just thinking about this as I'm talking, that in itself is really good content to put out, to ask those questions to your audience. That's always great because it shows, you know, honesty, integrity, it shows openness um, of just going to your audience and saying, you know, what do you want to, what are the things that mean the most to you in a certain cause, for example? What do you want to learn more of? Go, understanding that is a fantastic way to, one, create some content that encourages uh, interaction and two, helps you inform this, this persona document so with that also um now we've kind of got a bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing with our content strategy and where it sits and its purpose we've thought about who we're trying to serve um but before we create the strategy we want to be really clear on something and it's something that's really easy for me to say um but it's harder to do and just before i show this to you some of the research that we're going to go into into the practical bit in a moment will help you answer this question if you don't know this already. But this is the, this is the thing. Um, what do we want to be known for? That is such an important question to answer in a single sentence for anyone engaging in social. This should be at the top of any strategy document you're ever going to create, right? You need to be really clear about who we are. So if, you know, if your organization is a person, think of it as a person. What kind of person is that? And that is a really important thing is that when we represent our purposes, our mission, our values, people connect around that. Now, as I said, I've said this quite a few times already, but for the organizations that are on this session, this is going to be much easier to do than other organizations. And actually thinking like this gives smaller organizations an unfair advantage over their bigger ones, because this is where a lot of larger organizations struggle on social too many people involved, they don't get as crystal clear on their message as they could be. And this is why, as a small organization, we want to be crystal clear to say, this is us, this is what we know, we're, what we believe in, this is our mission, this is what we're trying to do. And once you've got really clear with that, then all of your messaging becomes much easier because you know who you're trying to serve and you know what you represent. And once you understand those two things and you're clear about them, Honestly, the rest of the strategy stuff gets so much easier as a result. But 
talking of strategy, let's go ahead and do it. I feel like I've been talking for ages, so I'm halfway through. So we're, we're on time, which is a shocker for me. Right, six step strategy. We call it the Content Cal six C's. I'm gonna talk through them one by one. You don't need to remember them, but essentially what this is is a framework of building the perfect strategy. We've been doing this for many years. So this is kind of what we've developed as a result. I'm also going to show with you in turn six of these free tools. Don't worry about like noting them down right now. We're going to talk through them one by one and, and how they're used. But essentially, we're going to take these six C's as a strategy, take these six tools, and then we're going to bring it to life using a bit of a fictitious scenario. So like I've been talking about, it all starts with the customer, the target audience, who you're trying to serve, the person that you are you are ideally trying to deliver this message to. We should already know this a bit from our persona work, but even if we don't have that persona stuff going on right now, starting on this process and all the research we're gonna do right now will really help inform some of your persona stuff. So it always starts with our customer, it's always will do in social. And this is where we use the first tool, which is called Keyword Strategy Tool. So simply, you can find that on keywordstrategytool.com, entirely free. There is no paid version. And this tool is one of my favorites of all the bunch. I've started off with my favorites. So yeah, it's only downhill from here. Um, so what we'll do here is this is our opportunity of understanding what our audience are asking for and what are they searching for across Google and YouTube. Casting your mind back right to the start of this presentation, um, I shared um, the two primary places that people go to research things, which is search and social. So Google and YouTube being the two primary sources that people go to. So this is going to be a fantastic tool to get in the heads of who we're trying to serve. So we're going to search our cause. So I've put in myeloma. Um, so I'm just using this as an example scenario, which is a type of blood cancer, unfortunately, quite close to my heart. So um, what we're going to do is search this. We're going to look in the jurisdiction that's of interest to us. So we're just going to search the whole of the United States, press search. And then what we're going to do here, that is then going to bring back all of the search terms. So what positive keywords means is essentially all of the um, phrases that are searched on Google and YouTube, if we are selected that as well. So great. Well, it's 800 keywords. What on earth are we going to do with all of that information? Because this is like literally what everyone's searching for. So this is the way that we're going to make it easier. It's sticking with that tool. You've got this little filter option here. And what I rep recommend here is typing in every question preposition you can think of, like how, where, when, which, why, every one of those. Because every time you search that, it's then going to pull out all of the questions that people are asking. And as you if you remember when um, a few slides back, I showed you that kind of education part of the grid. And I was like, this is our opportunity to add value to our audience, to educate our audience, to tell them what they're wanting to learn. And this is how we find out what they're wanting to learn. And all of the questions that are coming out of this, we can just keep on just searching those. And as you can see, they just pull over onto the right hand side of this. So now we've got a list of all of the um, the, the keywords, the phrases, the questions that our audience are asking, we need to take a couple further steps on it, staying with the same tool. Sorry about how this screen looks. It's a little bit, a little bit overwhelming, but um, this is where like the, the gold is. So we've taken all of the questions and all we've done is press in the top left of this tool, looking at search volume. So this tells us how often this phrase is searched. So people searching for um, multiple myeloma, um, 301,000 monthly searches in the US on Google related to this. So clearly it's, yeah, it is a, a very, unfortunately, popular thing to search. But of course, all of the questions that are being asked, like how to diagnose or how do I know I've got it, etc. All of those questions are ranked too. So all of the questions that you filtered out, we now have a priority list of them because we now know the ones that are of the highest value to our audience. So essentially, we've gone inside the heads of our audience and looked at what they're asking for, what's in their minds. And now we've no a priority list behind it. So what we're going to simply do is press the export button, which takes all of the um, those questions that we filtered out and all of the, the search volume. And what we're going to do 
is put this in tool number two, which we're going to use Content Cal for this. So Content Cal is a content planning tool. So this allows you then to start building all of your research into the plan you're going to use to actually start doing this work. So this is an important part because what we don't want to do is spend hours doing research and then for that research to live in a separate document somewhere. We want to make it really easy to do that research, find those, those findings, and then make it easier to create our content as a result. So what we've got here, just as a recap, we found all of the questions that our audience are asking across um, Google and YouTube. We've got a priority list based off how often they're being searched for. We've just taken that list and then we've popped it here in Content Cal, stored it as content ideas. And we've basically got a year's worth of content ideas straight off the bat. Honestly, if you spend about half an hour doing that yourselves, you'll have enough ideas to fuel your content plan for the whole of 2022. Honestly, for, for a free tool, you can't argue with that. Now, um, I'm going to go on to tool number three, which is a freemium tool. So there is a paid version, but uh, the free version will probably get, or the free trial will get you what you need. Now, there's two parts to this, and this tool is called Mentionlytics. So mentionlytics.com, this is tool number three. Now, um, the reason I like this is for, for two reasons. And permit me to explain a bit around this because it sometimes can be a bit of complex to, to explain. What Mentionlytics gets you, gives you the ability to do is to see what your overall reach is across all of social, YouTube, and also the you know, wider internet, your blogs, your website, basically aggregates that all up and tells you how many people you're reaching. Just so you know, um, the word reach refers to the amount of unique people that have the opportunity of seeing your content or have seen your content. So reach really is the data or the statistic behind that top of the funnel bit, you know, that awareness bit, that very top of the funnel. So, and that's why it's such an important metric reach because essentially it helps us measure our influence because that's what we're trying to do with social, reach new audiences, you know, like we've been saying all throughout the start. So this is a really important thing to track. And then what we can do actually, um, because we, we all like looking, you know, at, at what others are doing. Well, I certainly do. Um, we can go ahead and put in our competition into this. You might not see them as competition. You might see them as others in your space. Uh, but then you can see what the share of voice is. Basically, how much reach are you generating versus others? And then you can look at what others are doing. And that will help give you some further inspiration. But the, the second thing, because whereas, whereas this pie chart that represents share of voice is really useful for you to just track and, you know, for a bit of curiosity to see the influence and impact you're having. But if we click on this people icon, this then tells you all of the people that are mentioning you or talking about you, either writing about you online, um, talking about you on Twitter, on Facebook, YouTube, etc. So you can see all of the people that are mentioning you right now and when I first looked at this tool, I was massively surprised as to how many people were talking about us that I had no idea. And it's when these people start talking about you, this is your golden opportunity to build relationships with these folk. So I'll give you a real life example. So Leeluk Bullock here is someone that I have respected for a long time in the marketing space and um, used this tool, saw that she was talking about us quite a lot and recommending us, had no idea. So I use that as an opportunity. I mean, she has 101,000 followers, which is about 20 times what we have. And so now Leela and I uh, regularly create content together. I will ask her to contribute her thoughts to blogs sometimes. Sometimes we'll do like a podcast together. Sometimes it'll be a guest webinar like we're doing right now. So those kind of things not only help us create better content because it gives more diverse viewpoints because you've got someone else involved, it also opens up your channels of promotion because when Lee Look has created some content with us, she'll share it with her audience too. And that then increases our reach because that's 101,000 new people that wouldn't have seen us before that have now seen us. So as you can see here, when we look over the course of this time period, we've received 178 mentions, but look what that's done for reach. Honestly, I think this is the most underestimated part of social. I could talk about this for days, honestly, um, but I'll try and keep myself within the next 30 seconds. But that is the network effects at play. 
when more people talk about you, you go into more people's feeds, more people discover you, the reach gets bigger and bigger. Your top of your funnel gets bigger and bigger. More people become aware of your cause, more people then research you and then look at your educational material. And then they hopefully choose to um, invest in you and like, yeah, and your fundraising efforts see, uh, see a, a jump as a result. So honestly, working with more people like this, building content in collaboration, um, if you don't take away much from today, that should be one of those key things to take away. So we've done a lot around customer, right? We've done a lot of research around everything that they're looking for. We've kind of built a, a bit of a plan around this and we've got a load of ideas now. Um, and we've also looked at what, what's happening in our total influence in the space and also those other individuals that we could use to help amplify our content and work together. So we've got a good picture of our customer and what's happening in, in our industry. Now, let's look at context, which is how do we create relevant content that should land with the people that we want it to? So this is tool number four, no prizes for guessing what this tool does, entirely free of charge this one, best-hashtags.com. Very simply, we've put in uh, the cause that we're talking about here, which is myeloma. It pulls out all of the most liked and the most relevant and the most popular um, hashtags on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, and that gives you a ranking of, as you can see here, how many posts represent this, and also you know, your top 10 hashtags related to it. But the best thing of all, we can just simply press the copy button. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna paste them into Content Cal. So we're going to, like I said, throughout all of this, when we're doing our research, we want to use this research to improve the speed at which we can create content. So these snippets in Content Cal allow you to save the little bits of, of content, like this group of hashtags. And then essentially, whenever you come to create a post, press one button and all of those hashtags come in. Great way of speeding up your process whilst using all of the research that we've, that we've done. Also, what I recommend as well is thinking about your content plan as we build it in what we would call themes or categories or topics. You know, some people, you might call them different things, but ultimately having a thematic approach to your content plan will really help you. And the way we can think about themes will have been um, already facilitated through the work we did on the keyword strategy tool when we were looking at all of the, the questions that people are asking. When you read through that list, you'll start to see themes emerging. Those themes might be like how to or diagnosis or questions or news or research, whatever it might be. I would recommend if you've not thought about like themes before, start with five and run one theme every single day, because that's going to help make life so much easier for you. If one, you know your five themes you want to work to run a different one every day, it's going to make your analysis so much easier as well, because then you can start to see actually did my research content perform better than my uh, diagnosis content in this example, or did my news content do better than my best practice or whatever it might be. So that's that's why I typically recommend five and not over engineering it. Try and find those five really important themes from your research and then create them as category tags and content cal. So we're gonna come back to that, however, when we build the plan. So tool number five, fairly obvious one, it's another really good use of hashtags, but this is making sure we're, we're jumping on national days. So go to daysoftheyear.com, entirely free. Go to browse calendar, you'll see all of the national days that are upcoming for the next quarter, next year, et cetera, and all of the associated hashtag. So this will make sure that you'll never miss an opportunity again. So if it's, you know, mental health awareness week, as it was a couple of months back, we want to make sure if we're a organization that has a part to play in that conversation, we want to make sure we don't miss that opportunity. So we want to take those hashtags and we want to build it into our content plan like this. So that if we want to have a voice on creativity and innovation day, because you know, you will always see a spike in reach because lots of people start searching that hashtag. It starts trending, more and more content gets discovered. So that's where that's really important. So it gives us an opportunity to get additional reach. So using national days, plugging that into our calendar, we're starting to see our plan take shape now. We've saved some of these category tags. We've saved the snippets using those hashtags. We have saved uh, our national days so that we've got a good kind of plan shaping up. Um, and also we've got a whole bunch of content ideas, all kind of nested within our main tool that we're using for planning here. 
Now, creativity. Let's uh, do a quick time check to see where I'm at. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. So creativity is going to be fostered by a lot of the work that we've done already. But one thing that I definitely recommend, it's a free tool that we do, or that we have rather. Uh, if you use Google Chrome, uh, just search Content Cal um, Google Chrome and you'll find this little Chrome extension. So this is really useful that like if you're browsing the web, both on your phone uh, and on your desktop, you find actually that's a really interesting article. You know, you don't want to necessarily create posts in the moment. You want to create a plan behind your post. But when you find something that's inspirational and you think, actually, you know, that's given me an idea of something we could do. Just press that button. It's then going to clip a snippet of that article and save it to your content hub on Content Cal and see that as your like digital pin board really. So this helps you find and save ideas, which makes life so much easier when you're creating a content plan where you've got a load of inspiration to build from. Step four, collaboration. And there's two sides of collaboration. So first side of collaboration is, um, this is a really powerful tool actually. We only built it recently and it just allows anyone within your organization, they don't need to have access to Content Cal because they might not need it, right? Um, it allows anyone to just go ahead and pop in an idea that they might have. So it's a great way of opening up the opportunity, making it a lot easier and more accessible for other members of your organization if you're working in a team to share ideas. So anyone can share in an idea, whether it's just a picture they've taken when they were out, um, you know, they might have been out of the office and they've, they've come up with some really interesting content. Um, they can just share it straight into here. So there, this is just literally a link and that people can, that you can share with others and everyone can share stuff into it. it works on mobile too. So a really nice way of collecting those ideas and inspiration. And it all goes into this library on the content hub, as you saw with the previous thing as well. So what we're doing here is collecting ideas and inspiration from different sources to really speed up creation. And the final tool takes us into the kind of second area of collaboration. And I've spoken about it a lot already. Um, this is called Hype Auditor. This is a freemium tool. So there's a free version, um, but then there's obviously paid versions too, but the free is quite good. Um, so Hype Auditor allows you to find those kind of collaborators or influencers in your space that you could work with uh, to build content together. So search your, your keyword. I've just searched coffee here just as a generic term. It then brings up um, the, the amount of people that have influence in this space, looking at their category and audience quality score. I wouldn't go after people with 24 million followers because um, they'll probably want paying for that. Um, I would look at people between kind of two to 10,000 followers that they'll have great kind of micro influence and be more open to collaborating with you if, they, if you share a similar purpose. I, I've spoken lots about this. Um, it does take some effort. There's no, there's no lying to that. Um, but honestly, it does it does make your strategy so much more powerful when it's built um, alongside others as well, complemented with content you're creating together with others. Now we're getting into the final throws of it now. So step five is all about channels. So here we are back into Content Cal. Uh, it's worth me saying, I haven't mentioned it already, whilst there is a 70% discount on TechSoup, there is a free version of this. So I want to make sure that I've gone through all of this. Um, telling you to use Content Cal. And you could also use a Google spreadsheet for your plan as well. So I just want to be clear about that. But anyway, um, so we've got our ideas we've taken from uh, daysoftheyear.com. We've got all of our national days taken from, um, <laughs> let me do that again. We've got all of our content ideas we've taken from Keyword Strategy Tool. And then we've got all of our national days that we've taken from daysoftheyear.com. We're going to go to Content Hub here where we'll find the uh, inspiration that's been shared with us uh, by other members of our team or our colleagues, partners, whatever, um, and also content that we've saved as well. So let's just say we've saved this piece and we actually want to do something with it. Maybe we want to reshare this article. So we saved it earlier. We're going to press use content. We're going to put it out onto whatever platforms we need. So we want to automatically publish this. We want to schedule this content. So we're here. We're taking our inspiration. We're going to schedule it. We're pressing this, um, this uh, square button here, brings up those snippets that we saved earlier. So these are the hashtags that we know we want to use um, that we researched on besthashtags.com. And here's those category tags that we saved earlier. You know those kind of themes that we were speaking about. So here we're going to add those themes. 
so as you can see, like I've been saying all along, all of the kind of research that we've done, you know, is is there to speed up the creation of our content. We've got some inspiration. We're going to use the snippets to make sure we're using the right uh, hashtags. We've got our guides or our category tags to make sure we're using the, the right theme and topic so we can make analysis of this content easier, which we'll go into the next step. And then we simply add this content and add the rest of the content that we want to create based off that research, all organized across these themes and topics with a different one every single day. So with that, we've got a real clear picture of our audience. We know the hashtags that we want to use. We've got awareness of the national days. We have saved some ideas and encourage creativity. We've encouraged collaboration. We've built this all together in, in one plan now. And now the final throw of this is the calculation. So here we can understand at the end of the week or the month, how did our audience grow? You know, did we get more fans and followers as a result over the last week? Post engagement, did it go up and down? So these are likes, shares and comments all counted together. And then here in this filter section is really important. Here's where we can bring in those category tags that we saved earlier. So like, you know, whether it's best practice or news or research, we can just click on that and then see how our different topics that we're speaking about impacts growth. So if we talk more about research, do we get more engagement? If we talk more about news, do we get more? What's the best time to post as well? And also all of the top performing content related to that theme. So this is when the process gets so much easier because now what we've got, we've already done a whole load of research that's kind of set our strategy, but also now because we've started to do this for a week, um, we've got some findings coming back and we're starting to see some maybe some content or some themes emerge that are working really well. So then all we want to do is press this button here. If you can see this in the, in the blue circle, this allows you to take that post that performed well the previous week and just add it as a draft to the following week. I don't advocate putting out the same thing again and again. But when you're adding things as a draft, you can see it's a draft. It's got a blue light on the top of it, so it won't be published. So here, what we can do is kind of create a template content plan for the next week or next month using the stuff that worked really well last time. So yes, we'll want to tweak and tailor it. But now what we've got is a whole load of research supplemented now with stuff that we know is working using our own you know, analysis. And that makes the whole process so much quicker each time, because that's why those six C's are a cycle, because once you do the research and get into a consistent process, a process creates momentum and momentum creates results because the more you do, the more analysis you get, the more top performing content you get, the more you'll start to reuse and repurpose. So whilst it might seem that the first week will take you know, an extra couple of hours to, to do with all of your research, the following weeks get so much quicker. Hence the reason, you know, like I, I started this session with that the idea of this strategy it's doable for people that don't spend their lives doing social media, don't have budget, big budgets and resources to do, but you can still deliver great results using quality free tools. That's all engineered about delivering the right result for those people that we're trying to serve. And with that, I'm going to go to q and over around by six minutes. So sorry, Aretha. It's okay. Uh, it was some great, it was powerful stuff. We needed it all. So yes, you can go on a Q&A and I have some questions that I could not put in Q&A, but I'll ask you them um, if you want to go ahead and finish with Q&A. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I will do. So um, cool. So uh, James, uh, thank you for your comments on the presentation. I appreciate that. So uh, James says, I keep running into the word influencer being redefined, usurped by the word of social media as number of followers. I see the new use of influencer as meaning semi-filtered reach rather than targeted or credible influence. I think you used it both ways. A thoughts about identifying and engaging real influencers. Can you recommend measures of meaningful, productive, effective reach beyond click-throughs or actual donation sales results? Excellent question, James. Uh, there's a lot to unpack in that. Um, I probably answered a little bit around um, in that tool, which was called Hype Auditor because they audience quality score answers a degree of that for sure um because yeah that's there's still the word influences is, is quite is is a very broad thing the way that i was thinking about in the context of this presentation i consider it as kind of micro influencers typically those with smaller reach 
um, an audience of maybe two to 10,000 of people that are just genuinely passionate about the thing that they stand for. And that's where hype audit is really good to find those folk, as is um, mention lytics, which is the tool I mentioned earlier, where you might find people that are already talking about your brand already and have a degree of credibility. Um, it's, it's a very hard, it's a, such a broad subject, so it's really hard to answer it completely, you know, to say, you know, this is factual because there's a lot of grey area around it. Um, I would also say as well, um, TikTok personally have done a huge amount for making this a lot more transparent, the world of, of influencers. So if, if TikTok is a platform that anyone's interested in, they've just relaunched their creator marketplace. So if you search cre a TikTok creator marketplace, there's, there's a lot um, within that as well. So a few answers for you. Um, cool, uh, another question for, sorry, I'm trying to multitask here, which I fail with. So another question from James. Um, you asked some brilliant questions, James. Uh, is persona simply your preferred word for target audience or do you think it is something different? Perhaps it's just to move thinking closer to qualitative psychographics or quant slash demographics. Um, yeah, the way I think of persona really is target audience, the audience that you're trying to serve. So fundamentally, if you had to put a, a picture on your wall of that person, that type of person is the individual that I would like to serve more than anyone else. Um, that is the way I, I consider it. Um, there's, there's a lot of nuance to that too. And of course, like I said earlier, there'll, there'll likely be multiple different target audiences that people will have. But yeah, I think my, my challenge to, to everyone on this session is try and think as, you know, what I class as the minimum viable audience, the, the get as targeted as you possibly can. Um, so let's move on from that one. Um, Steve uh, has asked, what are your thoughts on Google ads? Um, for us, I can only speak of my personal experience, um, incredibly powerful. Um, so nothing, there are probably two channels that from our experience that have delivered fantastic results on the kind of like the short term type of stuff. You remember at the start, I was talking about like short term paid ad performance, Google ads and Facebook ads would be the first two places that would get any of my paid budget if I had any budget at all. Um, so yes, uh, I think it's good basically, Steve, um, would be my answer. Um, Umi or Yumi, sorry if I've um, pronounced your, word, uh, your name incorrectly. Um, is Content Hub a tab on Content Cal? Um, they've asked, so the answer is yes. We were talking about Content Hub as a way to collect ideas and inspiration. Uh, from others uh, or found online. So yes, it's all connected there. Um, uh, Anne-Marie, great question. This comes up quite a lot, which is how much content should a company be posting daily, weekly, or on each social media account? It's a perennial question. Um, the answer is undefined. There is, there is no fact to this. So if I told you, I if I told you a number and you sort that as fact, I don't think that's the right thing for me to do. But what I would recommend to start with, and I say this to everyone, if you're just starting out, I would post one post per day across the core social platforms that you're on, which might be different for different organizations. One post a day across the platforms that you're on, um, created around one particular theme every single day. One, that's easier for, for you to manage and create a strategy. And two, probably more importantly, is that it gets you known for delivering a certain thing on a certain day. For example, here at Content Cal, every single Tuesday, I give um, a view on the changing landscape of, of social media um, and post a video on all of the changes that have happened across all networks every single Tuesday. And I've been doing it for the last year. I'm now known for it. Just one post. Actually, the less post you do, a uh, post you do, the more impactful it can be because, um, I'll give you an example on LinkedIn. So um, this is a quick side note before I answer the other question. Uh, I've attempted to, to post uh, more times per day on LinkedIn and I've seen worse results because the algorithm, which is the, the mechanism that decides how much your content is seen, then has to compete. You're basically competing with yourself because you've got multiple posts happening. So it's hard for the algorithm to know what to serve. Um, 
Michelle, that's definitely a very important point to, to call out. Uh, well, well, thank you for your, your comments on the presentation. Uh, but Google Grants provides $10,000 a month for nonprofits. I had no idea about that. It's definitely a good one to flag. And that, I think, is at the end of the questions.